Hello, welcome to the Josh Walensky Show. Hey, this is part two of my exciting interview with Diana Montford, a transgendered activist. Mm. And we had so much fun <laughs> during the first uh, and part and after. of this. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, whoop, what happened, Diana? Oh, you know what happened? What uh, happened? I pushed the wrong button for a moment. But anyway, here it is. Okay, Diana. Yes. So in the second part, yes, I want to ask you about, you mentioned uh, you worked in a club. Uh, what club was that? I, many, for many years, I was the MC at Paddles, the friendly SNM club, and it was friendly indeed. And I, uh, well, just as actors, uh, you know, bakers bake, actors act. It was a job. I love the people. They're very nice. Love my friends at Paddles. Love all the lovely uh, guests we had at Paddles. Hi, people. Love you. Uh, and, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. The money wasn't great, but it was a lot of fun. And it was certainly an education in the ways of the world. Yes, and now, you know, uh, I'm going to mention something. What? Uh, one day, I was reading one of these B magazines. There aren't too many B magazines left on the newsstands What's a anymore. B magazine? A B, you, well, you know, had uh, a few girls, many girls. Oh, what they used to call girly these, magazines. Yeah, these kind of magazines. And my liberal aunt, my red diaper aunt, came into the room and she said, Josh, if I were you, if I were you, I would uh, tr go out and find the real thing. Without staples in yeah. her navel, yeah. yes. You know, she said And it. those girls who are photographed in those magazines, yeah. I mean, exploitation of the bimbos. Yes. We shall overcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway... Yeah. Uh, he who controls the means of sex controls. <laughs> no, no, no. Did Karl Marx say that? I'm not sure. But anyway. Yeah. Each so, according to his ability, each according to his need. But yeah, I'm yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's Marx. That's yes. Marx. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. So what are your needs? Want to talk about my abilities now? Uh, yes. Yeah. So anyway, I said, mm. well, okay, I knew what she really meant, intellectual. But I said, gee, I wonder where these girls do hang out. So... I had no idea until one day I was passing Show, Show World on the corner of 42nd and 8th Avenue, about a half a block away from Joe Franklin, and there my favorite woman was I met Joe Franklin woman years ago. was on the marquee. Who was uh, it? Mei Ling. Oh. Now, Mei Ling is like Mary in English. Ah. So I went in, I watched her show, and then I took some Polaroids with her, and I told her about her scripts and her techniques. And she said, oh, you know so much, you know so much. I bet you you hang out at Bernard's. And I said, being the sophisticated New Yorker I am, yes. I said, yeah, yeah, I hang With out at Bernard's. Extended. But I never heard of Bernard's. I've never heard of it. What is no, it? No, Bernard's was a restaurant on the corner of 48th Street near 7th Avenue. Oh, the hub of, of the Bonton, yes to the triple X, the X, oh, God. and the B-movie industry. No, 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 no. Paddles was not like that. Paddles is a very fun place that is not, there is no sex allowed, none. And dominatrixes do not do sex. I mean, in their private lives they do, but you do not, it's like shrinks seducing their patients dominatrixes do not seduce their clients. It really is being a psychodrama therapist. It is not being a sex worker. Ah. It is, no, it really isn't. It is about finding what someone needs and then helping that person to achieve it, to face it, to enjoy it. Oh. It is not about sex. There is no sex. It's therapy. Well, in a sense, Therapeutic. yes. Therapeutic. With a whip. Yes, I mean, there is no sex allowed. And, you know, many dominatrixes happen to be lesbians, and they do not want to establish the precedent of sex with men. 
So uh, there is no sex allowed. As far as I know, I could be wrong, but I certainly never had sex with my SNM friends, and I don't know anyone who did. And I have known and been among the top dominatrixes on earth. So you're hearing it from the, hor the horse's mouth. Oh, yes. so it's like a, uh, it's a therapeutic club. <laughs> well, <laughs> sort of. it's not exactly a spa, but yeah. I mean, you won't get a seaweed wrap. And you relax there. <laughs> In a manner of speaking, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I mean, one does need to ease one's tensions, doesn't one? I think it's probably part of the intellectual erotic community. I can't tell you how many times we discussed Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, and their various merits at Paddles. I mean, let me tell you, it was just a regular symposium there, you know? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah. I am perhaps being a tad sardonic. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Uh, I used to uh, I used to uh, uh, hang around with some of the post-porn feminists. Oh, like who, Annie Sprinkles. Who are really yeah these yeah, people she's and great. and they you know her group uh, her group uh, I forget the name of Candida Royal and all these people uh -huh. sure. they have a different philosophy. Like, theirs is a style and way of life, uh, which yes. is integrated in their very existence. And it doesn't, it's it certainly, the, it's, a, it's a total picture. It involves a lot more than just sex. Oh, sure. Well, s and I mean, you know, s and is, I mean, we're all into it. We just, some of us know it and some of us don't. Indeed, most of us don't. But everybody has both dominant and submissive impulses. And everyone has dominant and submissive sexual fantasies. And it's just a case of accessing those fantasies and enjoying those fantasies, I would think. Don't you? Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the great intellectuals of all time yeah, we're horny have, been, uh, yeah. have been what, you know, they uh, classify as ACDC. Well, bisexual, you know. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and which is very, very, uh, uh, which well, is prevalent terms, among yeah. many creative uh, people. Of course. And intelligent people. Well, too. also, many creative, intelligent people happen to be asexual, and that's fine, too. I mean, you can't say that sex is the key to everything because... Freud may have thought so, but I don't. Uh, I think that uh, if you like sex, like sex. If you don't like sex, don't like sex. Like whatever you like and don't like whatever you don't like. There are no rules and there is no, uh, you know, there is no uh, kind of, you know, you must do this or you mustn't do that, I think. Yeah, I, uh, I as I said on the other show, my philosophy is, that whatever makes you happy is absolutely fine. As, and if it makes somebody else unhappy, then you should pay attention, but you should at the same time, if it doesn't violate any rules or any law, exactly. and it isn't really the problem of the other person. Well, sure, if I'm a transgender activist, if my being a transgendered person or an activist makes someone else unhappy, well, too bad for someone else, because that would infringe on my freedom. So, I mean, yes, don't hurt anyone, but, for example, the Christian right, they apparently are hurt by anything that is uh, progressive, liberal, about freedom, so it's too bad if they get upset. I mean, you know, let them put on their big girl panties and deal with it. What can I tell you? you know? Absolutely, abs oh, wow. absolutely, absolutely. You know, a good example of sensibility that's going on now is this uh, situation with the mosque. Now, I thought about it originally, like many of the progressive people, I was for the building the mosque where they wanted to build it. But then I gave it a great deal of thought. Mm -hmm. And mind you, I'm a pro-Palestinian person who is very sympathetic 
with the people of the Middle East. But I realize one thing, that you cannot ride roughshod over the sensibilities, the passion, and the feelings of a large part of our population. I 1,000% agree, and I would ask this You question. agree with me. 1,000%. I mean, we do not live in the United States of Bloomberg, and everybody here has rights, not just the person with the most money, you That's know? That's right. And something else. Ask yourself, who exactly is financing this mosque? And why, pray, is Bloomberg so desperately dedicated to making this mosque happen? You know, I mean, he seems more dedicated to that than to almost anything. Absolutely. When he's not preventing people from smoking, when he's not cutting the salt out of their diets, whether they want the salt cut out or not, Grandma Bloomberg knows best. Everybody bow down because he has more money, so he knows everything. Somehow, I don't buy that. And I, I do think that, yes, we have to take everyone's feelings into account and yes, it's true, we do live in a free country, and yes, people can build anything they want, wherever they want, but on the other hand, there's such a thing as tact and sensitivity. And you cannot build, you know, um, something that most people involved would find offensive, and that's just the way it is. And it's like advertising icebergs near the Titanic. I mean, you don't do this, you know? If people do not wish to have that mosque there, and their family members died, and they perhaps barely escaped from the World Trade Center, then it is their right not to have the mosque. And we do not live in a dictatorship. And that's the way it is. And I'm sorry if Mayor Mike doesn't like that. But everyone has rights, not just Mr. Money. Am I right? Absolutely. In fact, I learned that from my mother. You know, one, my mother was very sympathetic toward Pan-Africanists. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, she adored people of color because she was Russian. And you know, poets, uh, Russia's greatest poet was actually a black man, Alexander Pushkin. Oh. And his grandfather, of course, was a, a black man from Africa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also <coughs> she had a secret passion for Paul Robeson. But but one day we she wasn't had a the friend only one. Was very who disliked black people intensely, really disliked them. And uh, we asked him why, and unfortunately he was in the wrong place at the wrong time many times, and he lived in a beautiful housing development next to a slum. Mm -hmm. and. He was held up many times by black people in a laundromat and mugged many times. So when, when he articulated his, his bad feelings about black people, I was uh, tearing him apart. And my mother said, no, no, leave him alone. Because unfortunately, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time so many times yeah. that you cannot disregard his sensitivity, I his agree. passions, his emotions. You can't, you can't, you can't change it. So just accept it as it is. And this is the same with the mosque. These people feel that this mosque is being built over the bodies of their loved ones. I agree. And we have to take that into consideration. Absolutely. Diana, what else is new in trends? What is, what is, uh, what are you optimistic about in transgendered activism? Well, we uh, want, of course, worldwide acceptance. Everyone wants worldwide acceptance. We would like that. We would like uh, uh, the Supreme Court to make uh, gender rights the law of the land, as opposed to having to do it town by town, state by state. Uh, we want basically what everyone else wants. We do not want special rights, we just want rights. <laughs> and we are well on the road to that, thank God, and thank Goddess. And we are working very hard to make uh, 
universal transgender rights a reality. It might not happen within the next 50 or 100 years, but someday. And also, you know, as time passes, gender becomes less and less relevant because gender is, as I've said, a social construct. And the world is changing to the point where everyone is sort of androgynous. So I don't think that um, actually gender rights might not be an issue 100 years from now because gender might not be an issue 100 years from now. It might be usual to go into a bar or whatever they have then and say, so are you a man or a woman? And, you know, because no one can tell who's who or what's what. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, something that I hope for and I hope that... You hope, uh, this is one of your main dreams? I didn't know this. It's great to know. Yeah, yeah it really uh -huh. is. I would like to also see a world where profiteering becomes against the law, too. You know, profiteering? You I know, would like to see that bottom become. line, human nature is human nature. And people will always despise minorities. The majority will always despise minorities. And someone will always want a little more money than other people. So you're never going to do away with profiteering. And frankly, to be entirely honest, I don't think we will ever have universal respect and love for every type of person on earth, including transgender folk. Because ultimately, the world is a cesspool. The men and women merely turds, let's face it. The world is not a nice place. And people can be quite brutal and savage. And that is just as much a part of the human race as kindness and altruism, don't you think? Yeah, for our listeners, uh, for our listeners, are there any transgendered sanctuaries and communities in the world? Well, New York City for one, San Francisco for another. Uh, I don't know about other nations, but I know that most metropolitan centers tend to be more progressive, more liberal when it comes to gender expression than, say, small towns where uh, even if you wear too bright a shade of lipstick, if you're a genetic female, you're in the social doghouse. So I don't know. I think probably if you're transgender, it would be a good idea to go to a city if you're not in a city already. And if you, uh, bottom line, love yourself and respect yourself and don't let people make you feel like less simply because you're transgendered. You are in fact more. You have the courage of your convictions. You know who you are. You are willing to live a life of integrity knowing your gender reality. So don't ever let anyone make you feel like less because you're transgendered. There is absolutely no humiliation inherent in being transgendered. Oh my gosh, you know, you know what I forgot to ask you? What? What time and what day is your show on? The Diana Montfort Show is, as we film this, on at 10 p.m. Thursday evenings on Channel 34 and all over the world on MNN.org. So you can see us at 10 in the evening on Thursdays on Channel 34 or wherever you are on MNN.org, as in motherknowknow.org, MNN. And we are all over the world, and that's a good thing because we, I hope, are a force for liberalizing the gender climate, for want of a better term. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've seen it a few times and I've enjoyed it immensely. Well, thank you. And you know, I wanna, this thing that I was exploring at the very beginning of the show is really, I think, an extensive thing that I have to do a little more checking in on. I mentioned Bernard's, which was a, uh, also there was no, uh, there was no sex or anything or drugs at Bernard's and so on. It just seemed to be a singles, uh, well, a bar that catered to people actually in what they called the entertainment industry or in, uh, and you, you, if you remember at one time, there were 500 theaters, 
porn theaters across the country. I frankly don't, and but I was never tremendously fond of porn theaters. So, no, I don't, but I'm sure there were, and I'm sure they filled a need. Well, I'm not defending them, but I want to say in the 70s, they did have scripts, they did have music, they did have fairly decent actors and actresses to such an extent that uh, Film Quarterly magazine did an article on that many of these people should really cross over into the legitimate film industry. That's how talented some of the actresses were. But still, in spite of that, the script still left much to be desired. Well, uh, a lot of actors of all genders have got their start in porn films, so I am sure many have crossed over, they just don't tell the public. But I myself have never done a porn film, do not plan to do a porn film, and uh, have nothing against it, think it's very interesting, but it's not my thing, you know, so. Diana, what kind of work have you done besides uh, paddles and so on? I was a makeup artist. I was, uh, sounds like a joke, but isn't. I was director of makeup at the Barbizon School of Modeling ah. in Paramus, New Jersey. Ah. I uh, was counter manager of Orlan at Bloomingdale's. I have done real work. I have schlepped to work every day. Neither rain nor snow, nor snow nor sleep will keep me from my paycheck. I have, yes, done real work as opposed to television, acting, and other things. I have also, I was also um, not as a job, but I was, uh, I studied with Michael Moriarty, the great acting teacher and actor, and uh, have been an actress since I was 17 years old. Good heavens. You know, and, and it, it's been an interesting trip. What can I say? Ah, so... You've combined all your skills into this splendid uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network show you put in? Well, I hope so. I, I hope it's splendid, or at the very least, fun now and then. And yeah, and I think everyone on television brings all of her or his skills to bear on her or his show. I hope they do. Wouldn't you say? Well, yes, the public access is just such a great reserve of some of the greatest, most creative, talented people I've ever met in my life. And uh, I just hope it thrives. We have to, of course, get more stuff on the internet. Yeah. And also, somewhere along the line, I think we should uh, get Time Warner and the other providers more in line because I sometimes... <laughs> Crawl, Time Warner, yes. Yeah. Kiss my videotape, yes. Yeah, sometimes I go up to 223rd Street, I think it is, that uh, office that draws a lot of minority people, and much to my chagrin, grin, I see people paying hundreds of dollars on their cable bills. Ooh. And this is unconscionable. Well. And you can watch, and they have holes in their shoes, and they need the money for other things, for rent, for other th food. And here they're spending hundreds of dollars on cable, and something has to be done to about it. To watch cable, you mean? Yeah, yeah, because they watch a lot of sports. Well, bread and circuses. They watch sports, they don't care about politics. But yeah. It's all part of the plot. Ooh. You know, I mean, if you entertain people with sports, they're not going to stop and think, gee, why do a few people have all this money and everyone else has nothing? Hmm. Okay, give us a preview of what's coming up on the Diana Monfort Show. Politicians galore. We do all the politicians, and we do many LGBT people and some theater people, and sometimes they're the same person all at one time. They're political people who are actors and queers, $9 bills. But usually we do like to separate, you know, uh, the guests and, uh, well, any politician in New York and New Jersey, uh, they are a possibility. Any actor, any LGBT person who might have something to say. Yes, uh, 
and watch the Diana Montfort show. 10 p.m. Thursday evenings. That's redundant. P.m. and evenings. 10 p.m. Thursdays, channel 34, and all over the world on MNN.org. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you know what I want to ask you? Mm, Are what? you going to, do you intend to have Andrea Sears on your program? I have asked her repeatedly. She is not uh, fond of appearing on television. She is, as you know, a great newscaster, news reader. She does the BAI evening news at 6 p.m. and repeated at 11. And I've known her forever, love her. She has carte blanche to come on my show whenever she wishes. But she apparently is not uh, a television person. She prefers radio, and that's fine, you know. But Andrea, if you're watching, anytime you want to come on, come on. You know we love you. Yeah, she's uh, intellectual. She's well-educated. And she's a lot of fun. I just admire her tremendously. What a marvelous broadcaster she is. Yes, she is. And BAI yes, is. is very lucky to have her. And you and believe I that and, and give that girl a raise, damn it. And I want to see her become the director of news. I mean, Amy Goodman, they had Jose Santiago. Yes. And now they need Andrea Sears. Well, what, what, are, what is uh, Andrea Goodman doing these days? Oh, you mean uh, Amy Goodman? Amy Goodman. Right. Democracy Now! I love Democracy Now! One of my favorite shows. Amy! And she is brilliant. Amy Goodman is brilliant. And Jose Santiago as well. And Jose Santiago sometimes does do news stories for the BAI News, doesn't he? Yes, yes, yes. yes See, yes. I'm very familiar with BAI. I love WBAI. So, it's well, my favorite this, radio Well, this has been the Josh Walensky Show. And it's been so much fun being with you. And uh, I wish we could do a third one. Well, we are going to do a third one on uh, Diana's show at the end of the month. Yes. What day is that? Well, we are on film, so the day we shoot is not the day we show. So never mind what day we're shooting. We're actually shooting on the final day of this uh, month. Okay. But uh, we will, the final Thursday of this month. Yeah. But it will be shown soon, and you will see Josh in all his Joshua-like glory, being Joshua. And that's yes. always fun.